I've come to Oban on the west coast of Scotland for one very specific reason, seaweed. It seems to have had a resurgence lately, especially in this area where there's lots of seaweed farmers because of its amazing potentials for carbon capture and also all of the applications in day-to-day -day life. So I'm gonna head along the coast and I'm gonna meet some people that can tell me all about this amazing wonder crop. Our priority here at Samsung, we are quite fortunate in that sense, is we have our experimental or two experimental seaweed farms. So mm -hmm. our focus is more on the practicalities and synergies. How do you best grow it? Which species performs best? We are usually tied up with industry partners who then take it to that next step of processing and we are working closely together with different companies to find more sustainable and also circular ways of growing seaweed in the seaweed circular economy principle. I'm working at the seaweed farm, so I'm employed as a seaweed cultivation researcher and there we are doing everything from finding out which ones are the best species to grow, have the best growth potential, all the way to what can we use them for. How do you best grow it? To keep it simple, what you do is you have your baby seaweeds in a culture and they get deployed on something called twine. So it's a very fine, uh, fine rope. And that rope is just wiggled around a deployment line, a seaweed growing line. And that line then goes out to sea, usually around October time. And it's just left there for eight to nine months until you come back and you harvest it. Britain, and especially Scotland, is beautifully positioned to make that industry grow, you know, and help little small-scale farmers up to bigger commercial farms to get it all set up right. I think the only hurdle we still have to take is bringing it up to a large scale where it can make the financial revenue you need for it to be a viable business. Okay, come in. Thank you. What's your step? So this is the aquarium. This is one part of the aquarium is our annex and here a colleague is working on sea urchins. So the reason why I brought you here is to show you some of our seaweed we also have deployed at the farm, but mm -hmm. today, unfortunately, uh, the weather doesn't allow us to go to the farm, but at least you have yeah. the seaweed here. Okay, so this is the, the one that you this is the sugar mainly yeah. harvest. This is now a fairly, fairly old blade already, and mm -hmm. old because you can see it has been grazed on, but you can still get the scale of it, so that's mm. maybe a third of what a saccharina could be at harvest. Okay. One, two, three. It's like doing a shot. Mm. It has quite some texture to it, no? You wouldn't think it. It looks Ooh. a bit like a lettuce leaf, but it's much stronger. Yeah, there's a strong aftertaste. It's not bad, though. Good one, no? I like it. Hi, Ryan. Hello, how are I'm you doing? Emily. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. There are different aspects to what we do in the nursery. One of the aspects is we biobank um, different, different species and strains from around the UK. So we take cultures um, from wild populations basically have a store of that culture. So when a farmer wants to set up a farm, they need to have a local strain, even if it's the same species. Okay, so in here we have our red control temperature room, and that is to enable the seaweeds to grow photosynthetically, um, but it actually prevents them going fertile. It's actually the blue part of the white light which enables fertilization. Okay. So these are all bubbling cultures. Okay. So they're all they're all bubbling with with air that's been filtered. And so these are all local species which we supply to seaweed farmers. Essentially we grow these cultures up and bulk them in the separate sexes, so in the male and the female sexes. Yeah. And then when we're ready to fertilize them, once we've got a desired density and when it's the season to be out planted, which is um, around October time, start of November, um, we mix the males and the females and then we put them in white light for around 10, to, 10 days to two weeks. And then from there, we can seed them onto um, a twine reel. Thank you. So I'm told you can tell me a bit about the applications of all of this seaweed that I've been handling. I, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, as you can see, these are just a few examples of the multitude of things that you can do with seaweed. I've got a few examples here, and these are all really local products, which is, which is great. So we have the seaweed that's grown and cultivated around here, then used in things like here we have uh, crisps. So mm -hmm. sure make a fantastic range of crisps. They also have pestos. We've got a local company here in Mull that makes chutneys. So that seaweed that's taken from the Hebrides um, and made into soap, fantastic product that. We've also got here some t-shirts. So you can even make fibers out of seaweeds. You can make bioplastics out of seaweed. They degrade faster than even, you know, orange rind. 
mm. uh, can. So it's really, really good for the planet and great for us as well. Mm, right. uh, so you can use seaweed as animal feed. At the moment, we're bringing in a lot of products from South America. So things mm. like uh, corn, soy, everything like that, that is then flown. We have to cut down the amount of rainforest just to grow them. Uh, using seaweed instead could replace a hugely emitting industry uh, and replace it with a much more sustainable one. So trying to use these products uh, at the moment is not cost effective, which is why a lot of people don't do them, which is why a lot of these products are artisanal. So to scale it up to a level where it would be uh, cheap to use whole, all around, mm would take a lot of effort and a lot of work and, and a lot of automization as well. Seaweed Academy runs from within SAM, so we're training people, helping them develop their uh, products, helping them better their techniques uh, out on the farms. Uh, we're also trying to reduce the carbon footprint of our farms. Obviously, not that much of a carbon footprint compared to you know agriculture, but there still is some um, in the concrete blocks that we use, in the steel ropes that we use. Uh, so we're looking at ways to try and reduce the carbon um, output of all of those operations. So there's more of a demand now for us to focus on uh, what seaweed can do, what it can't do, um, what the potential is for it for the future uh, and how we you know, make it as efficient as possible.